Good morning, Nigerians. I I have a confession. On the twentieth of November, two thousand sixteen, Linda Clems made an arrangement for me to come to Ikeja and that we were going to meet her sister's friend, a family friend going to America. That was what she told me. Okay, so it was supposed to be a hookup, but it wasn't really exactly put like that. But she told me that a family friend of hers wants to meet someone nice someone cool and that he's going to america that same night and that he wasn't going to waste much time and he wants me to meet the person and i said fine 2016 was immediately after my graduation from anambra state university i was preparing for my youth service i'd already gotten you know um my statement of results and my name had already come out as one of the people who was going to go for the youth service. So I finished, cleared everything in school and I'd gone to Lagos waiting for my posting letter. So on that day I got to the hotel. I don't mean I can't really remember the name of the hotel because Linda was already in the hotel before I came to meet her there. So when I got there she told me the person was coming and the person came few minutes after I arrived and walked in into the room. It was a sweep. And when the person walked in, I recognized the person somehow, but I didn't really know for sure who the person was, but I knew it was um, a familiar face. So when the person walked in, it was supposed to be like a quickie, quickie arrangement. And you know, I, was, I didn't know the person and Linda was the one giving me the direction. And by the time person walked in hurriedly and you know it was an awkward situation but I was asked to join him in the room and when he got into the room we had sex and then after the sex he slipped his number in my hand and said call me call me don't tell Linda I gave you my number so when he came out into the, the sitting room Linda was there with him and he brought out a bundle, a bundle of money, I think it was 500, I can't really say exactly the amount. And Linda split the money, gave me half of it. Immediately he gave out the money, he went off because the idea was that he was traveling and that, you know, he was, you know, going against schedule. So he rushed off. He didn't spend up to 20 minutes in that um, apartment. And after then, I noticed that his face was really familiar, but I was really struggling in my head to, you know, really ascertain where I know the person from. So I was, I was happy because at the time I needed a lot of money. I needed, you know, I was broke. I left school broke. I, I was planning to go for youth service. I needed a lot of things. So, you know, it felt good that because I saw the bundle of money and I got. A good part of the money so after that night I and Linda went to the place at Ikeja we had dinner we even stopped we saw some girls hawking and we said sensitizing the girls on why they shouldn't hawk and all of that and I and Linda returned to the hotel we spent the night I know I woke up sometime 5 a.m. that morning and I opened my phone I was going through insta blog insta blog post and I saw I saw Apostle Suleiman, his posts on Insta blog, I think one of the sponsored posts of his programs or one that he did, he gave somebody a car, something like that. I saw it now like, oh my God, this was the man I had sex with. That was when I, you know, could place, you know, my mind on the fact that I knew this person. I knew I knew this person. And I said, I couldn't say that to Linda immediately because if I said it, I don't know the kind of risk 
I would be putting myself, admitting that I had an affair with a man of God, of that, you know, status. So I had to play safe. I kept quiet. And when, by the time it was morning, we had breakfast, and Linda dropped me over at my sister's place at Lekki. And when we got down, I think it was about 9, 10, she was going to head over to her place then at Aja when she was in Nigeria. And I asked her, who was the man that, that you arranged me with? I, I think I know the man. He looks familiar. He looks like a man of God. I said, no, that's, he's not, he's not the person I think I saw that. It's, it's her sister's ex, family friend. There was something she said anyway, but just a family friend. I already know what I know. And the fact that I had his number, I said, okay, I just admitted it. So, another confession is that I later saw Apostle Suleiman after my youth service. After my youth service, we were talking during the time. I think I wanted to be redeployed to Delta State. So I was asking him if he knows someone that knows someone that can help me to get redeployed to Delta State. And he asked for my code and I gave it to him. And even though that didn't work, I later served in Lagos. And after Kano, youth service and um, camping at Karai, I went back to Lagos and when I was in Lagos, there was a time he came to Lagos and he called me and we saw the second time and we had sex that second time at Oriental Hotels. He gave me another sum of money. Why am I doing this video now? Why am I telling this story now? Remember a few months ago, for some of you who are my ardent followers, I I got baptized in the Redeemed Christian Church of God where I confessed Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Where I agreed that as Jesus, you know, was crucified and as he was buried, in the process of the baptism I was buried and as he resurrected, every of my sin died and I am born again. You know, it's been since since 2016 till now, it's over four years of uh, four years to five years this event happened and because after the second time I had said to the Apostle Suleiman and I just knew it was wrong. I had to stop. I stopped calling. He stopped calling. I deleted his number. I have been mourning this sin. It has been tormenting me. Every time his sexcapades or controversial news comes on online, I get you know, I cringe in my spirit because I know the truth. And it, it, it was so difficult because I just, I just found it so difficult to come out and tell the story because of my family, my friends, my fans, people who love me, people who look up to me. I just, you know, because that fear of people, you know, judging you and, but I, at this point, I thank God for the consciousness of the Holy Spirit. It is no more about you. It is no more about family. It's about me and my personal salvation with God. It's about me making it to eternal life. It is my personal journey. And this, the reason why I'm doing this now is because I have to restitute for the sin. This is not just a sin against my body, but a sin against the body of Christ. God cannot be mocked. And sitting back for all these years and watching so many controversial stories about Apostle Suleiman come online and I can't say anything. For me, it's a betray betrayal to my God. And today, it ceased to happen. This is my truth. I am saying it because of my love and commitment with God. Because of the body of Christ, which is the church. I am saying, I'm coming out with this story also at this time because like every other controversial story about Apostle Suleiman, there's always a victim. And most times these victims, you see them, you know, sometimes they're scared, sometimes they're oppressed, like the case of the YouTuber. The man was locked up. Look at all the controversial stories that surrounded it. I have, I have no part in the YouTuber story or whatever, but I can't sit back and see someone where, where nobody's perfect. We're all imperfect beings before God. So every time these stories come up, this pastor or apostle has never accepted even one. 
I am coming out to say I have done this sin of adultery against God because I am not perfect. I, Choma Grace Defender Ludike, I am not a perfect human being. I have sinned, and I know by the restitution of this sin and confession of this sin that God Almighty, the truth, the way, and the life will vindicate me and will give me eternal salvation. I don't want to go to hell. I, do, I want to make heaven. I want to walk right with God. And I want it to be done in truth and in spirit. So this is why I'm doing this. And I want this to, uh, to be an encouragement to every young person out there who is committing the sin of adultery, fornication, whatever sexual immorality. Because the world is doing it does not mean that you will do it. As a Christian, we need to obey the commandments of God, which is shunning adultery. Let this encourage you. If you have any truth, come out with it. Nobody will kill you. Nobody will oppress you. Nobody will intimidate you. I am standing on behalf of millions of young girls out there who, because of pressure of, of money, need for, for, for money, need for, you know, just the common things of life, things like food, shelter, clothing, because the lack of governance in our society have been pressured to sleeping around. I am standing in the gap asking for forgiveness from our own, from the Almighty God and also asking you to come out, confess your sins and turn to Christ. Thank you very much.